Chapter 24 covers extinction. Extinction is a commonly used procedure, typically used in conjunction with some other reinforcement-based procedure. So uh, let's get into the details on how to use extinction. First, in reviewing the definition, extinction means the discontinuation of reinforcement for a behavior that eventually will lead to a decrease in the frequency of that behavior. So in other words, the behavior is extinguished by severing the relationship between the behavior and the reinforcing consequence. Now, one of the important considerations when applying extinction is that we have to know what the reinforcer is. So in other words, it's not just simply removing attention uh, or um, ignoring behavior, it involves discontinuing the reinforcer. So therein requires us to do a functional analysis to determine what reinforcer is maintaining a particular target behavior. Once we know the reinforcer, then we could apply extinction appropriately. So again, sticking with the, the definition, we're going to discontinue reinforcement for a behavior and it will lead to a decrease. So the variations are going to be based on the behavior's maintaining variable. That is the reinforcer that maintains the behavior. So we want to uh, keep the, the semantic, we'll talk about semantics of extinction uh, near the end of this presentation, but we'll talk about them briefly here in and of the fact that extinction is a procedure, right? So it's the implementation of a technique. Behavior can be extinguished by the use of extinction. So that therein, you know, is a little bit more of the terminology. So what are the results of extinction? Well, uh, there may be an extinction burst. That is, after a behavior has been placed on extinction, you've removed the reinforcement, you may see an initial and temporary increase in some dimension of the target response or target behavior. Typically, the, the frequency will increase or even the intensity can increase. So if you consider what's happening, maybe from the point of the the um, the recipient of the extinction procedure, the behavior or their behavior has been reinforced for a long period of time, right? So you engage in a target response, it results in reinforcement. Suddenly, your target response does not result in reinforcement. So you're not going to give up right away. Typically, what, what will happen is you will start responding rapidly, right? So you'll see a, an increase in responding, or you might even start responding with more intensity. The classic example I often use here is uh, imagine you, a vending machine that you use on a daily basis, perhaps at your work, or um, if you're um, if you go somewhere where there is you know a vending machine, you put your money in, you get your drink out. Uh, but one day you go and you put your money in, the drink does not come out. You're, you're probably not going to walk away easily. You may put your money in again, thinking perhaps you did something wrong or incorrect. Um, still, your drink doesn't come out. You may even try a third time, maybe even you know banging the machine a little bit, such that your um, hopefully your drink comes out. But if it's broken, if the machine is broken, it, it never will. So then you will contact Extinction and you will probably walk away, maybe use a different vending machine. And that, that effect may last for some time. You may come back the next day and say, well, that vending machine didn't work yesterday, so therefore I'm not going to try it again. So the first result of Extinction often will be this Extinction Burst. And there can be some other Extinction-induced behaviors. Uh, temporary increases in aggression, maybe some emotional behavior, some crying, some yelling, perhaps. Uh, again, because the target behavior has a long history of producing reinforcement and suddenly it is no longer producing reinforcement. So the latter result of extinction is you will see a gradual decrease in response frequency over time. So in other words, extinction takes a little while to take effect, to actually start working. You may also see later, at some point in time, the temporary reappearance of the response following a period of extinction. 
right? So again, imagine working with a client whose problem behavior is maintained by attention. So you decide you wanna implement extinction, maybe with some other procedure, but uh, let's focus on the extinction part first. So the, the target behavior occurs, you do not respond to it because again, the reinforcer is attention, so you're not providing attention for that target behavior. You may see a, an initial increase and you're not providing uh, attention for those initial increases in the target behavior. You may even see some other behaviors. So you're doing a great job implementing extinction and uh, the behavior eventually over the maybe a couple days goes away. So it's no longer occurring. <clears throat> it's possible at some point in time that the behavior will suddenly reappear, right? So it's been extinguished by use of extinction, but it can randomly reappear. And I don't want to get into details of why it can reappear, but uh, suffice to say that if the, the organism or the, the client in this case contacts the same stimulus conditions, uh, uh, same SDs, it's possible that suddenly the behavior may reappear, right? Because they're, they're, um, there's a history of reinforcement there. So this is an example of what a target behavior or a response might look like that undergoes extinction. So in this graph, we have some initial behavior response frequency. Let's call this baseline, right? So there's some level of occurrence of the target behavior or the frequency under baseline. We place the behavior on extinction. So here we have reinforcement removed, or in other words, extinction is implemented. And over the course of time, going here this way along the bottom, we see this increase in the behavior. That is our extinction burst. Then we see this gradual decrease, and that is the behavior undergoing extinction. It is extinguishing over time, maybe even to zero. <clears throat> and then of course, at some point in the future, you may see it spontaneously recover. So extinction could be pretty effective, but this notion of the extinction burst is concerning because we, particularly if, if working with severe challenging behavior, we don't want to necessarily see this sharp increase in the problem behavior, or maybe even an increase in some other behaviors. Back in 1995, uh, rather, Dorothea Lerman and Brian Awada conducted a study wherein they reviewed 41 sets of data from the Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis where extinction was used as a treatment. And they saw extinction or increases in aggression in about 50% of the cases, right? So um, the dark bars represent the cases from, from, from published articles where no extinction burst occurred and the, the sort of lightly shaded are cases where extinction burst did occur. And the bottom graph shows the results for aggression. So you could see that extinction burst and aggression occurs in a fair number of cases. So as practitioners, we could look at that and see that, well, if we do elect to use extinction, it's highly likely that an extinction burst or perhaps elicited aggression will occur at some point. So that is concerning, again, if the problem behavior is very severe, we might risk more injury to the client and or other people. Um, <clears throat> or if the, um, if the behavior is just disruptive, we might see more of it. So we, we could take two paths and we're going to, we'll, we'll probably take both paths. The one path is we could uh, utilize some other procedure in conjunction with extinction. I always kind of approach this more in the, the inverse. When we're using a procedure like reinforcement, we may also elect to add extinction as the secondary component. So in other words, I never run extinction in isolation, right? It's not my go-to intervention. It is something I add to an intervention if I feel the need to do so. The other avenue we would take is to not, not only for us to be prepared for this extinction burst to occur, but make sure we inform others, for example, for working with a family, we might tell the parents, well, we're gonna use this procedure and there's a chance that the behavior might worsen before it gets better. 
right? We need to do that because we don't want the parents to uh, see behavior worsen and say, well, this isn't working, right? We have to be aware of that and make them aware that this procedure may take some time to work. So I started off highlighting the importance of conducting a functional analysis before considering implementing extinction. That is, we have to know what reinforcer is maintaining the response or the problematic behavior before we select a procedure or describe our procedure for implementing extinction. So first we're gonna cover extinction for behavior maintained by positive reinforcement. And from the ABA 510 class, we talked about positive reinforcement for problem behavior being in the form of either attention from other individuals or gaining access to some tangible item. So obviously if extinction involves the discontinuation of reinforcement for the behavior, we're simply going to withhold or not deliver the reinforcer. And in this case, we're not going to deliver the positive reinforcement. But there are some other considerations. So um, what if the reinforcer is absent? That is, let's just say the problem behavior is maintained by attention, and we're not currently providing attention to the individual, <clears throat> but the individual disrupts the class by making a loud noise. Well, we certainly would ignore the noise, and if there were to be any reinforcement being delivered uh, <clears throat> or on schedule to be delivered, we would withhold it, right? So we're going to make sure that that target behavior, in this case of making loud noises, um, does not contact any form of reinforcement. So again, that's an example where the reinforcer is currently not available. It's not being delivered, but the behavior occurs. <clears throat> what would you do if the behavior is being delivered, or I'm sorry, the reinforcement is being delivered? So once again, if problem behavior happens to be maintained by social positive reinforcement in the form of attention, and I am talking to the individual that is providing attention, and they suddenly engage in the problem behavior, uh, how would I implement extinction then? Well, I would simply ignore the comment and discontinue speaking. So in other words, I would with, with withdraw the reinforcement, I'd remove it. So that's for positive reinforcement. How would we address behavior maintained by social negative reinforcement? And again, in our discussion in ABA 510, that comes in the form of escape or avoidance. Another name for this type of extinction is escape extinction. So in other words, to remove the negative reinforcement here, which typically is escape, we're going to prevent escape. Okay, so hopefully that, that makes sense, right? Again, consider the context of problem behavior. If the, the problem behavior occurs to gain access to escape, social negative reinforcement, to implement extinction for that type of a behavior, we have to prevent the escape. Okay, so therefore we call it escape extinction. So we, uh, if the ongoing stimulation is present, we would not terminate it. So the, the, a great example of this is if you're delivering instructional demands, perhaps delivering a worksheet and the student tears up the worksheet, you present a new worksheet and maybe even physically guide the student to complete the worksheet. Another example might be if you tell the client to tie his or her shoe and maybe they engage in aggression because in the past that's resulted in escape, we are going to hand over hand guide them to tie the shoe. So we're not allowing them to escape completion of, in this case, demands. Uh, in an avoidance situation, we would not delay the presentation of the stimulation. So a client tantrums when you show up to conduct your session, right? Because in the past, when that's happened, maybe therapists have left or given a break or something like that. So in this case, we'd simply proceed with the session, right? We'd work through the aggressive responses uh, or whatever the, the target behaviors are. Uh, again, <clears throat> being aware of that 
extinction burst, and then of course wait, waiting for that gradual reduction. Okay, so hopefully you could see, and I encourage you to look through the notes or read through the textbook to look at the differences between how extinction for behavior maintained by positive reinforcement is different procedurally from behavior maintained by negative reinforcement, okay? So what if we implement an extinction uh, in, in, in the way that, that I described for positive reinforcement to behavior maintained by uh, negative reinforcement, right? So what if, um, you know, we simply provide attention? Well, we probably wouldn't see anything happen, right? So extinction would be ineffective. So in other words, for behavior to be effective, or I'm sorry, for the, the extinction procedure to be effective, we have to make sure we are withholding the appropriate reinforcement. So here's a set of data that are representing a procedure of extinction for behavior maintained by social positive and social negative reinforcement. And the specific behaviors are mealtime behaviors. So this is what, what we call a pediatric feeding disorder case. And um, <clears throat> what these data are showing are inappropriate mealtime behaviors on the top graph and the percentage of trials with acceptance, that is acceptance of the target food items. So um, focusing on the top graph, <clears throat> what they're showing here is that when attention and escape is provided contingent on inappropriate behavior. You see inappropriate behavior you know, vary, <clears throat> I guess, sort of a mean of about 12 per minute. But acceptance of food is very low. It's variable, but ultimately it's pretty low. So then they're comparing two different approaches to the intervention, really in an attempt to show you the importance of either um, of understanding the correct function and applying extinction appropriately. So bear with me here. <clears throat> the, uh, this is showing escape extinction, but attention still is provided for the problem behavior. The uh, other variation is attention extinction, but escape is still provided. So really they're still providing one of the reinforcers for the, the multiply maintained behavior. And what we see is that <clears throat> there's really no change in the level of behavior uh, and the, uh, the percentage of bites accepted are pretty variable. <clears throat> when they implement both escape extinction and attention extinction, that is they're placing all problem behavior on extinction, <clears throat> Uh, you see very low levels of problem behavior and acceptance of food goes up, okay? And then they conduct the reversal. So a very interesting study showing uh, two things, not only the importance of understanding what reinforcers are maintaining in the problem behavior, but also applying extinction appropriately to those target behaviors. Here's another set of data showing extinction of behavior maintained by social negative reinforcement. So there is a, a functional analysis and descriptive assessment showing that SIB is maintained by negative um, reinforcement. Okay, so you can see their, their FA data are, are a little bit variable, but generally you see that problem behavior occurs most in the task demands condition. That is a test for social negative reinforcement. And in their structured descriptive assessment, that's what came out highest. So escape in that case would be escape extinction. So you see problem behavior per minute under baseline was relatively high. Then they implement escape extinction and problem behavior decreases. Uh, no extinction burst is evident. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, they go back to baseline as a reversal and then escape extinction. <clears throat> So again, you could see uh, some clinical examples there. What would you do for behavior maintained by automatic reinforcement? What would extinction look like uh, under those conditions? Well, if you remember our discussion of automatically reinforced problem behavior, it typically comes in the form of some sensory stimulation. That is the behavior is producing a sensory consequence 
or attenuating some uncomfortable uh, aversive condition internally, <clears throat> right? So pain attenuation, for example. Well, the form of extinction used in those instances is what we call sensory extinction. So in other words, if a target behavior is producing sens sensory consequences, we're going to place those consequences or the, the behavior, we're going to place it on extinction. So we're going to eliminate the sensory consequence. How do we do that? Well, it is possible for some behaviors, we could apply some form of maybe protective equipment. Uh, it, it, so for example, if I am hitting my head with my hand for a sensory consequence, maybe I'm clapping my ears forcefully, if I put on a helmet, I'm unable to produce that sensory consequence, <clears throat> right? Because the hands hit the helmet instead of my ears. So you might see extinction take place. Um, if, if I uh, skin pick, right, to produce sens a sensory consequence, I could put a topical ointment on there that might remove the sensation, right? F physicians can do this. And it, uh, that may act as an extinction component. Another interesting example would be how they treat uh, individuals with chronic drug addiction, uh, particularly opiate addiction. So obviously the reinforcement here is getting high and there are drugs that can bind to the same receptors as the drug that gets you high and block the drug from having an effect. So essentially, you, you consume the drug that gets you high, but it's not producing the high, and that is an extinction effect. They could do this for alcohol as well. So interesting variations for uh, procedural variations for extinction for behavior maintained by automatic reinforcement. Okay, here's a, an example of that. The stereotypic behavior here is plate spinning which was hypothesized to be maintained by the production uh, automatic reinforcement, but specifically the behavior produced auditory stimulation by spinning the plate, it made a noise. So the sensory extinction eliminated the noise. And you can see here under baseline phase one, when they implement extinction, um, behavior decreases, they do a quick reversal and behavior is low under the uh, <clears throat> sensory extinction component. They also add in sensory toys in phase two to promote appropriate play, which is a good clinical step in that case. Okay, so we talked a little bit about extinction in terms of semantics. Uh, so first and foremost, extinction is a concept in behavior analysis, right? It is a concept that involves uh, removal of reinforcement, which results in a decrease in the behavior. It's also a procedure, right? which again, in, involves removing reinforcement. The effect that we see is that the behavior is extinguished, <clears throat> right, by extinction. So that is very specific to extinction. We would only say behavior has been extinguished if it has undergone uh, uh, intervention of extinction. Punishment does not extinguish behavior, it just eliminates or decreases. So that's very specific. Uh, I've heard students say extinct the behavior, that that's inappropriate usage, so we would say, um, or the, the behavior is extinct, so we'd simply say the behavior is extinguished. Forgetting is not an example of extinction, right, because there's no reinforcement involved there. <clears throat> Response blocking versus sensory extinction. I, this, this is something I should have mentioned when I covered sensory extinction, but you can utilize your body to prevent the individual from uh, producing sensory stimulation with their body simply by, for example, if they hit their hand to their ear, you could put your hand by their ear and that may block the sensory consequence. It is important to note though, <clears throat> there is a specific procedure known as response blocking, just preventing a response from occurring. So it's, it may not be the same as a sensory extinction. And then uh, <clears throat> non-contingent reinforcement versus extinction. This is sort of a 
concept that you, you may remember from maybe 503. Non-contingent reinforcement is the uh, is in a sense severing the contingency between behavior and a reinforcer, right? So if you think of reinforcement, it's often contingent on a behavior. We deliver reinforcement and we see an increase in that behavior. Non-contingent reinforcement means we're just going to deliver the reinforcer for free, regardless of whether the behavior occurs or not. So that is also sort of breaking the contingency between behavior and reinforcement, <clears throat> but the reinforcer still gets delivered. Extinction is when the contingency is severed, but reinforcement is not delivered. Okay, so hopefully um, I, I, I want to encourage you to sort of really get this stuff to be part of your vocabulary. It's, it's important as a professional to be able to speak about this stuff correctly. Obviously, behavior, um, your behavior as a student also is important. So you should start using these terms and using it appropriately. A concept that we talked about in the past, particularly with respect to uh, schedules of reinforcement, is the concept of resistance to extinction. Resistance to extinction is how we would describe behavior that continues to occur during the extinction process. So, you know, if extinction is effective, the behavior will eventually decrease, but it may take some time to do that. So, so the behavior persists even in the face of extinction. The reason for this is because often behavior is reinforced on an intermittent schedule, right? And if you consider an intermittent schedule, it, from the perspective of, let's just say, the organism, uh, it seems like sometimes the behavior is emitted and it's reinforced. Other times the behavior occurs and it's not reinforced, right? So if we saw this, this sort of really loose schedule of intermittent reinforcement, it's probably going to take longer for behavior to extinguish under conditions of extinction because there is a resistance there, right? Uh, if behavior is reinforced on an FR1 schedule, that is every time the behavior occurs, it is reinforced, then we implement extinction. You're going to see behavior extinguish much more quickly. And you could just think of that in terms of the saliency of the the difference between the behavior being reinforced for every instance and then under extinction, no reinforcement versus <clears throat> an intermittent schedule where behavior is reinforced every so often, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not, to extinction where it's not reinforced, right? So it's sort of the density of reinforcement under baseline is going to um, affect resistance to extinction. <clears throat> so you see these historical factors. A continuous schedule would facilitate the effects of extinction. There's actually been some studies done where uh, even though behavior is reinforced on an intermittent schedule, uh, before moving to extinction, researchers have, have shifted from the intermittent schedule to an FR1 or a continuous schedule. Smaller magnitudes of reinforcement increase resistance to extinction. Um, a previous exposure to extinction results in quicker ex extinguishing of behavior under a second round of extinction. So those are some factors that, that influence uh, resistance to extinction. Also extinction-related variables, things like stimulus change during the extinction, uh, <clears throat> particularly in basic research, is, is there a stimulus correlated with extinction? that would result in quicker extinguishing of the behavior. And then the consistency. This actually leads to um, consideration of a, a limitation of extinction. We'll talk about that on the next slide, but it's hard to implement extinction consistently. Even if you implement it consistent, chances are the client will contact somebody who cannot implement it uh, consistently. So imagine uh, in the classroom, you utilize extinction to uh, eliminate 
goofy behavior of a student, you ignore it, the other students are not going to ignore it, so the reinforcer still may be present. So you have to contend with that. So therefore, we often include other procedures with extinction. And uh, that'll lead us into the next chapter when we talk about differential reinforcement. But extinction is typically never implemented in isolation in um, applied behavior analysis. So what are the advantages of using extinction? Well, it's a simple and direct method to reduce responding. Uh, it is effective if it's implemented consistently. The disadvantages include that some re reinforcers are difficult to identify or eliminate, such as uh, automatic reinforcement. As I mentioned, there are ways to do it through sensor extinction, but it can be difficult. It's slow acting, and then it has those side effects of an extinction burst or emotional responding, and this really um, would have it could have harmful impact not only on the client but others. And it doesn't really teach a new behavior. One of the sort of ethical or broad ethical considerations of a behavior analyst is problem behavior serves some function for the individual. Therefore, if we are going to eliminate it, we have to or we should teach some other behavior to serve that same function. So we'd want to make sure that we add some teaching uh, response in there as well. Okay, that is it for this chapter.